All right, I'm going to take this opportunity to go for a little night drive and we're going to test out the dash cam in uh, dark conditions. So I have my uh, dash cam up here. This is a black view and uh, we're going to take this uh, little USB key here and I'm just going to plug it into, if I can get it in here, there we go, like that. And up here we should see an icon pop up. There it is right there. So the dash cam is red, it's currently recording. If I tap on it, it saves the current um, clip permanently so it doesn't get overwritten. So um, yeah, we're gonna go for a little drive here and um, I'll use my GoPro here to record the uh, instrument panel. I'm trying to find some traffic here so um, everybody gets an opportunity to see what the new display looks like. And uh, I'll pull the footage off the dash cam from the Tesla and then we'll compare it against the Blackview. And uh, let's go. So a little observation, and unfortunately you can't see it here on the screen, but every time you get into the Tesla, the media player pops up. And yeah, I'm not too keen on that. I'd like it for, for it to actually come up um, only when I get into the car. So that's, that's the first, what I think is a little bit of an annoyance with this new firmware. which drives me a little bit crazy here. I'm just gonna get around this car. Well, um, Now I've been driving around. I'm, I'm gonna do a, a daytime run, hopefully tomorrow morning as well. And uh, we'll do some uh, nighttime and some daytime comparisons so you get an opportunity to see what the dash cams can do. But uh, the one thing I want you to really pay attention to, of course, is what the new autopilot display system looks like. Now, of course, yes, I'm in a Model X. Everything you see is exactly the same on the Model 3. The only difference, of course, is that it's on the first left third of the display on the Model 3, rather than being um, an actual dedicated display like I have. So in case you're wondering, yes, the functions are all the same. Uh, the one thing that I noticed this afternoon after driving around was that the autopilot system sees the lines a lot better now. It's much more refined. So when we go around some different curves, you'll see that it actually displays the lines much better in the road ahead. It's, I found that it's much smoother, it's much more flowing. I guess probably the best way. So uh, we're driving here and you'll see that uh, this car here that I'm passing here on the right hand side, uh, and there's the blind spot. You can see that the car is certainly behind me now. So this is a huge improvement on the new autopilot system being able to see cars in your blind spots as well as behind you. So I believe in this case, we're looking at um, all eight cameras are now live rather than just the forward facing camera up until recently. So that's a real big improvement. And uh, of course, Tesla will keep, to, uh, keep improving the autopilot system uh, to make better use of those cameras as we go forward. So, all right, so we're coming up to some more traffic here. You'll, you'll also notice in the uh, instrument panel here that compared to previous versions of autopilot, the uh, car has moved up further forward and that of course is to make room for uh, more of the blind spot monitoring of course, so you can get a better idea. The other thing you'll notice on this car uh, on the display is that it makes a better distinction between sedans, uh, small SUVs, so if I get up beside this guy here, he's a little SUV. Um, I, I can't see my screen all that well here because of the GoPro being in the way, but you'll be able to see some of the cars chase, uh, changing on the screen. So it sees SUVs, um, it sees trucks, semi-trucks, sedans, motorcycles, and people. Now, I can't show you motorcycles because, well, a little bit dark, uh, and I would actually have to find one. <laughs> uh, we're in the fall now, so most people are starting to put their motorcycles away, so... Unless we get really lucky, you may not see a motorcycle. And uh, pedestrians, while well, I'm not in a situation here to actually see a pedestrian, unless I review the footage, of course, in my neighborhood when I was going up to, uh, to see whether the, um, the system actually saw a pedestrian. So we're going to hop onto the highway here. And I can see that the dash cam is still recording. We'll use autopilot as well. Oh, I should mention that uh, this initial version release of uh, version 9 does not have the new drive-on nav that everybody's been talking about. Apparently, um, well, 
not apparently, we know what's going on. Elon sent out a tweet and said that they've decided to hold back on it for a little bit to do some more validation testing for a few more weeks. They're worried about edge cases. So that's why it didn't make it into this release. So we should see that in a future update. So the drive on nav is on-ramp to off-ramp or off-ramp to on-ramp navigation that is not in this release, but we will come up to um, an exit over here and we'll test the off-ramp capabilities anyways and just see if it's actually improved compared to uh, the previous version of autopilot that went out. So there's a car coming up on my left and you'll see here in the display that as soon as it passes, it should change into, and this is one of the things I've noticed when I was driving around today, is when the cars were approaching from behind, it would just show as a sedan generally. And as soon as the AI system detected it was an SUV, the graphic would eventually change to show an SUV or a truck. So there's a cutoff point as to which, I, I think it's the rear camera or the side cameras as to which one it actually determines what's what. Here's another truck. This is a pickup truck. Let's see what it does. Yeah, it sees as a car, I think. All right, we're coming up to an exit. I'm going to take the next exit on the right, and uh, we'll come back around and compare. Here's another sedan coming up beside us. So as soon as the autopilot system sees the lane on the right, I'm going to take it. There it is. And hopefully it should slow down. Whoa, it decided to uh, go a little crazy there. So I had to overtake. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice here in this screen that the icons have changed. So if I flip around to show you car settings or energy, whatever, I mean, the data hasn't changed. It's all the same, uh, but they've, they've updated the icons now. Uh, I tend to drive with uh, uh, trips on the left-hand side. That's the way I like it. All right, so we're gonna get onto the highway here again. You know what, let's try autopilot now. Well, once I get my auto steer on, let's just see what it does. And we're gonna get onto this highway here at night. And you'll notice how much smoother the lines are displayed in the autopilot screen or the instrument cluster compared to before. My speed is set to 105. It should start accelerating. It's a little slow on the uptake here. I'm going to initiate a lane change. This is what it looks like now. Yeah, the broken lines look better now. By the way, the little flashing red light that you see in the instrument cluster is the uh, red light flashing from my GoPro camera. It's reflecting in there. It's not um, It's not an aberration. There's nothing to worry about. That's just the, the camera showing that it's recording. So uh, don't bother uh, commenting on that. Now there are some cars coming up behind me on the left-hand side. You'll notice that it looks like a sedan, but it is in fact a small SUV. So let's see if it detects it. Seems to be struggling, I think at night, on detection of what kind of cars it is. During the day, it seemed to um, recognize it a little bit more. And when we do a day run tomorrow, uh, we should be able to see <clears throat> what it looks like and if it detects it any better. So we're just heading home here. We're going to take the next exit and see if autopilot performs any better uh, in the off-ramp situation. So once the car sees the lanes on the right-hand side, and there we go. No, it's getting confused again. It's not wanting to take the exit like last time. So. Don't know what's going on with that. Previously, it would just get into the lane. I'll just turn auto steer on. There's a car in front of me, so it should slow down. I'm just curious to see if it's gonna do anything any different. And the car is hesitating. And it's come to a full stop on its own. 
Now it does see the car in front of me here and it's going doing a little bit of a funky chicken. Whoa, there it goes, it started to accelerate. So obviously the new autopilot system does not recognize uh, street lights or signs yet. And of course I didn't anticipate that. I would suggest that that is something that's coming in the future. Of course it's required for full self-driving. We don't know if it's going to make it into enhanced autopilot or not. Remains to be seen. I would hope so but we'll see. All right, let's see if this thing recognizes any other cars now. I don't know if this is a daytime thing. Yeah, so there we go. It saw the minivan on the right-hand side. You can see here in the screen, it sees the car beside me. But he is not that close. It's just the uh, AI system is thinking that the cars are closer than they are. So maybe there's a little bit of work required, I think, in the uh, display uh, software so that it doesn't appear quite that uh, close. But so far, version 9 is a very solid upgrade from what I've been able to see. The user interface is much cleaned up now compared to previous versions, at least on the S and the X, of course, because the software is older on these cars than it is on the Model 3. And at least in the settings panel, they could uh, certainly use a lot more cleanup, and they've done that, so very big kudos on that. So we'll get home and uh, we'll uh, pull the camera footage off the dash cam and uh, we'll compare it to the black view so you guys can see what the differences are. The first thing you need to remember though about the Tesla dash cam compared to the black view is the black view has a 24 hour monitoring capability so it'll record even when the car is turned off or if you're parked. Uh, so, you know, if you have any kind of concerns with vandalism and stuff, that's the better solution to go with. I would suspect, based on some footage that I did look at a little bit earlier, that it is going to be a preferred solution for nighttime vision. It, it's certainly going to be a lot clearer. Um, of course, there's no cloud capabilities on the built-in Tesla dash cam, so you can't pull the footage off uh, remotely. You have to, you know, it's stored on the USB key, so you have to pull that out of the car if you want to re to look at it but hey it's a solid start you have to start somewhere and I suspect that the uh, software will improve over time let's see if this recognizes more cars this time so yes there's a car coming up on my left hand side oh it's a Tesla interestingly that all the cars are rendered as uh, as key fobs now they look like key fobs whereas before everything looked like a Model S Definitely a Model S. Okay, well, we're going to head home, and uh, we'll come back tomorrow, and we'll look at some daytime footage.